discussions sutta discussions uh, the sutta that i'm going to discuss dhamma niyamata sutta in this red book you can find it uh, page 55 भगवतो अरहतो सम्मास नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सम्मासबुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सम्मासबुद्ध हमे टू दिस ब्लाइंड वन द वर्दी वन द पुल लाइट इन वन हमें तो दिस अ ब्लाइंड वन द वर्दी वन द पुल एन लाइट इन वन हमें तो दिस अ ब्लाइंड वन द वर्दी वन द पुल एन लाइट इन वन सो डियर फ्रेंड्स इन धम्म द डिस्कोर्स दैट वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस धम्म नियामता सुत डिस्कोर्स ऑन द नेचर ऑफ धम्म द रीजन दैट आई I'd like to start with this discourse the sutta because it's very important to understand the meaning of dhamma before we start our sutta studies last evening i was mentioning few things about the dhamma uh, using this discourse the sutta we can go into deeper level what is the meaning of dhamma the words dhamma had been used in few places you might heard the word astaloka dhamma eight worldly conditions astaloka dhamma in pali in singhal it say atalo dhamma dhamma means also dhamma in another language uh, traditionally we have heard the word dhamma had been used in even in other uh, religious view points also as i know uh, sometimes they use kitu kitu dhamma dhamma and uh, slam dhamma slam dhamma all these words are there so then it's look like the word dhamma something regarding religion it's look like because all the dhammas are here but when we go into deep level the meaning the, when we try to find the meaning of dhamma when we go into deeper level the word dhamma doesn't have any connection with religions that is my feeling that is my thoughts but you can see it therefore before we start better to get some idea about the religions what does it means religions means kind of message coming from the divine beings Jesus Christ is a messenger. Nabi is a messenger. They are giving the message from the God. You know, they what they said, I am from this I mean connecting with the super power. I have a message for you. But in this Dhamma Niyamata Sutta, the words dhamma have different meaning. the teachings of the buddha is not a not a is, the buddha is not a messenger his teachings are not a, any message from anyone else teachings of the buddha his own experience 
the result of his investigation examinations the teachings of the buddhas are not message message from anyone else it is found in by the buddha through research re research and investigations and whatever the names that we can use the basic thing is is the result of research he found something what kind of materials that he used to do that research important material that he used the wisdom the wisdom therefore all these information categorized as sutta discourses coming through his wisdom wisdom is kind of uh, things which is going away from beliefs if someone full of wisdom that person not depending on beliefs when we are talking about the messenger you have to believe i am a messenger my message about this i got this message from so and so i am just passing to you no this is the nature of messenger it is kind of communication skills and communication device but in here the buddha is not a messenger he delivered all these sermons suttas discourses through his experience experience in himself that's why in him, in this uh, dhamma niyamata sutta nature of dhamma is very important so then the first one the buddha is not a messenger the teachings of the buddha is not a message from someone else it is his own realization and what else very important thing the buddha did not ask to believe it the buddha did not ask to believe there's a particular discourse which called kalama sutta kalama is the name of that person the buddha was having discussions with the wonderful conversation was there one day the buddha was uh, having i mean when when he was traveling with other monks to that particular village that uh, young person you know youngest young bloods are very powerful they are ready to go without thinking any other thing they therefore that guy also went to the buddha the buddha was uh, traveling with the other monks and then he might start some kind of sermons before he start the sermons then that young fellow was asking yesterday there was a religious leader similar to you he came and he said his teaching is the perfect others are not perfect don't believe believe about me and then he said not only yesterday previous day there was another leader and he also said same thing his teaching is the perfect the best don't believe any other before the, before him there was another teacher he also said same then today are you here to say same thing <laughs> before start the sermon that guy was questioning the buddha then buddha said no i don't have that kind of message for you in kalama sutta there were there are you can read that sutta you can see ma takke tu ma nai he tu ma the buddha was telling don't believe because it is logical don't believe it is coming from big book don't believe it is uh, it is kind of a statesman from such a wise person you don't know to believe or oh, this is coming from my generation is my heritage don't believe then what we should do you should develop your wisdom developing your wisdom through your wisdom if you can realize it then start to apply that 
then you can ast- apply it to yourself then you can see the results so your liberation is not depending on someone else your liberation with you you are the person who can see all the results of your applications so this is the way how the buddha explained in kalama sutta about dhamma therefore now it's clear the buddha is not a messenger the buddha did not ask to believe anything the buddha has to develop confidence through your experience if you are not experience it then how you can develop your confidence you can develop your confidence so the buddha's message the teachings of the buddha not a message coming from someone else it is a result of his wisdom so therefore to experience it we have to develop our wisdom without developing our wisdom there is no way to see that results now you can see the buddha and other religious leaders i'm not criticizing anybody but we have to see we have to talk about all these things openly to realize who is buddha is before listening to his message we have to have some kind of idea thoughts about the buddha who is buddha you all are here to listen to buddha's words so therefore before start to listen you have to have a thoughts about the buddha so that's why i wanted to give this background things about the buddha now it's clear buddha is not delivering any message from anyone else that's the first important things to keep in our mind and buddha did not ask to develop belief buddha asked to develop confidence to develop our confidence we have to experience it without experiencing how we can develop our confidence so therefore we have to experience it it means if you are applying dhamma the method way of life in your day to day life you can see the results not outsider even as a teacher teacher doesn't know your development because it is completely about his spirituality just looking at outside no one can see the results so therefore i mean there might be some kind of behavior changes so the, all these things would be there but basically we have you are the person who are responsible you can see the results benefits of your ap- applications in dhamma niyamata sutta it's explained the dhamma uppadava bhikkave tathagata nan anuppadava tathagata nan titavasa dhatu dhamma tithita dhamma niyamata sabbe sankharanicca tam tathagato abhisambhujyati abhisameti abusa abhisambhujyitva abhisamitta aachikkati deseti panyapeti pattapeti vivarati vibhajati uttani karoti these 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 are explained the dhamma and the duties of the buddha what buddha done bikku whether tathagatas appear or do not appear there is this established elements of dhamma see how the way that buddha start whether tathagata appears or not this dhamma will exist then it's very clear the dhamma is not a creation of the buddha dhamma is not a creation of the buddha dhamma means nature dhamma means nature it does not belongs to anyone whether you are living in here or in another country or in sometime might be out of the world it doesn't matter nature is nature nature means not the climate not regarding the climate it is something different things we can see what does buddha meant in here 
establish elements of dhamma this fixed law of dhamma there is nothing to change gathering in congress you can't change any of these rules senators are not able to do any changes here the powerful president is not able to do any changes here no no one can do any changes because this law is fixed all that is conditioned is impermanent what is that all that is conditioned is impermanent so dhamma this is one explanation about the dhamma everything is impermanent all that is conditioned is impermanent that is the dhamma the main rule of dhamma the established law you are living in this country or they are that country it doesn't matter this dhamma is unique for each and every one it doesn't matter even human or non human it doesn't matter divine beings it, uh, or hell living being it doesn't matter everything is impermanent so why buddha explain in this way a tathagata puli awaken to this now he is explaining what what happened to him the buddha puli awaken he realized everything about this nature that is the nature of buddhahood that is the meaning of becoming buddha he realized every condition is impermanent he realizes himself so it is not a message from someone else it is a realization of the buddha awaken thus un- uh, awaken fully understand it so awaken and thus understand it he announces now you can see what buddha done he announces points out declares establishes expounds explains and clarifies it all that is condition is impermanent so spend in 45 years as a buddha traveling here and there what he did this is the thing what he done by buddha announces points out declares establishes expounds explain and clarifies buddha spent 45 years as a buddha to do this to do this so is there any way that we can see the teachings of the buddha as something to believe no why in here very important tathagata puli awakens to this what happened to him he, he the buddha realized himself and then what he did he announces everything is impermanent he made a, he made an announcement he points out and he gave us a decla- uh, he declares established and expounds explain through his research re research investigations as a result of all these activities he found it and then he made that announcement and he declared it through the suttas through the suttas suttas the name we made later not the buddha buddha me just have uh, just had a conversation with others when someone come to buddha but later on in the sangha council they put the name for that oh this is this this is that this is that something like that in the morning we got a chance to listen to about alagaddu pam sutta because there is a simile about the snake snake simile and using that point alagaddu pam sutta and uh, in in this way the mangala sutta mangala sutta means uh, blessings discourse it's ma- it's explaining about 
the way how we can get blessings. So it put with, we put the name for that blessing discourse. Something like that. A name created by later with uh, I think probably in the Sangha Council or sometimes uh, after that even uh, the first time all these uh, suttas uh, uh, put into books uh, in Sri Lanka in the first century it might be happened in that time or anyway it doesn't matter it's not part of us but we can connect with through all these suttas the Buddha's teachings Buddha's explanations so now we can see Buddha realized and Buddha explained to us what does he realize all that is conditioned is impermanent and same way the second one all that is conditioned is unsatisfactory the third one all dhammas are without self all dhammas are without self these are the three things that Buddha delivered as Dhamma. Buddha explained the teachings of the Buddha are based on these three things. Don't, so then, what is this? All conditions are impermanent. Impermanence, suffering, selfless. These are the three nature, three characteristics about each and everything, including the person who is explaining these things. It means about the Buddha. The nature is this. It means we all are living under these three characteristics. All things are in this universe under these three characteristics. That is the main meaning of this nature of Dhamma or Niyama Dhammata Sutta. Niyama Dhammata Sutta. Let's see about what is what does it mean impermanent? What does it mean for you to impermanent? The Pali word anicca. What do you think? Impermanent? What do you think about impermanent? Huh? Huh? Everything changes. It just means has an end. Huh? Has an end. Has an end. Yeah. Changing as like according to Dhamma Chakka Pavatana Sutta, it's it says Jati Pidukka, Jara Pidukka, Vyadi Pidukka, Maranam Pidukka, Pi Sampayogo, Pia Vipayogo Dukko, something like that uh, about changes. So, just think about in ourselves. We can see changes through our body. When you go to mirror, sitting in front of mirror, we can see a lot of changes are happening. Already experiencing. We can see. To explain this, this is also kind of uh, uh, things regarding this same things in permanence but just think about to explain this nature you think does Buddha need to come to this world can't you understand all these things are changing we born to this world as a baby now we are not any more babies some of us already passed our young age and uh, some of I experience in some difficulties. Eh? These, these bodies are not growing, all bodies are decaying. So, through our experience, we can see all these changes. Like a person, Buddha, who realized that reality does need to explain this changes as, a, as impermanence things. It is very subtle and very deep thing 
no dear friends the buddha won't did not whether buddha appears or not we can realize this truth we know that particularly what buddha meant in in permanence nothing exist this is the very tricky part nothing exist nothing in exist what does means now we are in a kind of uh, struggling situation because if buddha say nothing exist who we are we are here and things are here we have so many concepts meditation hall bhavana center dining hall people monks nuns eh? female male all these concept are here seen all these concept how we can say nothing exist nothing in exist how we can say so impermanence means nothing exist so now we have to do some kind of investigation what does it means what does it means nothing exist then who we are what is happening to us i am not existing touch your body whether you are existing or not you feel my hand you feel my legs you feel my head all the feelings are here then how we can say nothing exist so very important thing this is regarding time this is regarding time this physical form when we divide it into small uh parts elements we can see fire elements sorry earth elements fire element water elements all these four elements are there all these elements are also impermanent these elements also impermanent according to the buddhism some sutras explain there are eight elements generally we use or there are four elements so all these elements create appear in different ways create and appear in different ways all these element can exist only 17 nanosecond only 17 nanosecond so we are living means only we can live 17 nanosecond to say these things it take millions millions seconds, seconds nanoseconds that's the problem so there is another connections which we call mind mind can exist only 1 nanosecond mind can only exist 1 nanosecond these physical parts can exist only 17 nanoseconds so the when mind and body connected together then we can see living person a living person in dhammapada there is a stanza achiram vateyam khayo patavin adishasati chuddho apet vinyanam chuddho apet vinyanam means when mind departed from the physical form then the body or physical part become a useless log useless log it's mean that so how long we can consider as a living being we how long we have connection with mind and body both how long mind and body working together that alone we can say is a living person but living means what is happening there every nanosecond his mind has been changing every 17 nanoseconds his physical body parts are changing happen in these things continuously something going on seen that things we 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 see, we, see, we say he is living that boy that girl that baby born to this world 
Now baby is growing, baby is uh, in young age and now decay. But according to the Buddha's explanation, each and every moment we can see only decay, not growing part, only decay. But generally we thought, oh, now he's growing, now he's decay. Sometimes perhaps uh, some are growing up to 50, 60 is growing, still growing. Someone in 20, 25 is growing, is over, now is decaying. And at the end, uh, we can see mind, depart, mind is departing from the body. And then we can see that body. That body doesn't function itself without mind. But it does not have that ability. So all the activities are happening with, when, when it's connected with the mind. The energy is there with the mind. So, but anyway, even the mind doesn't exist, even the body doesn't exist. This is very complicated things to understand. That is meaning impermanence. That is the meaning impermanence. For example, taking a past light. In dark situation, I'm holding that fast, uh, turn on fast light and holding it. While I'm holding in dark that fast light, you can see the lights. You can recognize as lights. Even though that lights turn on and turn off, how many times? 60 times per uh, second. Oh, I don't know exactly it belongs to it belongs to science, but anyway, we we see it's continuously light, but that one also turning on and off sixty times each and every second. Same thing with this electricity also. But you see, oh there's a light. And when I start to turn a circle, you see is turning a circle. But when we sp speed up, now turning a little past in dark, you can see circle of lights. You don't see flashlight there. You recognize circle of lights. Oh, there's a circle of light. Same as rainbow. We some, sometimes we, we can see rainbows. When we were kids, we, we thought exactly there, there there, there is something taking water from rivers. Later on we can have rain, <laughs> something like that. We had that kind of thoughts. So, now in here, I'm holding this fast light, I'm turning this fast light as a circle who is looking in the dark, they, they are thinking, oh, there is a circle, light circle. They are not able to see lights in single A menu. Any of these turns separately, they can see only the circle. Same thing with us. We are experiencing death each and every nanosecond, but no one can recognize our death. We can recognize only the death at the last moment, the kaya che the varana. Kaya Cheda Varana. Kaya Cheda Varana means uh, depart in mind from the body. That is the only one that we are ready to consider as death. But each and every nanosecond we experience, but we are not able to see, to recognize it. In same thing as the fast light is turning, but no one can see any, any changes there, any turning point, they can see only the circle. It's happening very fast. That's why we are not able to recognize. Our eyes not develop enough to see that changes. In same thing happening with the lights, the using bulbs, how many things that we can create. Last, I think, last week in July 4th, on July 4th, we saw so many uh, decorations through 
uh, fireworks. So many decorations. So all these decorations create by our what? Our illusions. <laughs> Not any realizations there. Our wicked mind realizes as things are there. We thought all these things was there. But really it is not. But this is the nature, the reality. This is the nature or reality. So now we have a thought so. Everything is impermanent. All the conditions are impermanent. It's not, nothing exists. This means nothing exists. Now, nothing exists, even though nothing exists, now we have so many concepts. For example, we are talking about apples. Apple. We are talking about apples. Everybody knows apples. Everybody knows apples. Everybody likes to eat apple. Within a few weeks, you can go apple picking. Hmm? Within a few weeks, you can go apple picking. Is apple real? Is apple permanent? Who created this apple? Apple created by the God? No. For example, as a baby, when we were living with our parents, they started to feed. They started to feed liquid things for us. And then they started to give something to bite. When we were having that liquid, which means uh, using using apple juice or something, making apple juice and then they ready to feed us. While they were feeding, they were talking about apple. Does that baby knows anything about apple? That baby only knows the experience coming through his, his tongue. They were talking about apple. Oh, I made apple juice for the baby. This is very good for baby. They were talking so many informations. But that baby doesn't know anything about apple. Only thing, what tasting, that baby can recognize. Later on, when he grew up, that baby grew up, one day, they were planning to go on a picnic. So then, parents were talking about the things that were, what we can bring there to picnic. And there were, there, there were suggestions and talking about apple. Why we are not having some apple? Better to bring some apples. Just in case these kids need to eat something, we can just give apple. So then, now again, now he can listen, that baby can listen something about apple, which carry, which can take from this place to another place. When we, when we are hungry, we can use that apple. We, that person, that, that baby is taking so many information about apple. Now, he has gathered some information through those discussions and preparations. And somehow, now they start to go to their picnic. On the way, generally we know we go picnic in summer. On the way, this might be end of uh, July or August. On the way, they were meeting some friends or other 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 people who are going to picnic or something so somehow they stop in in gas station or to buy something else they saw some apple apple stores 
looking those apples, oh, we have fresh apple here. Why you not have fresh apple here? Now they have different topics and they are talking about apples again. Again now they get into the car on the way. Someone was asking maybe an elder brother or sister asking, Mom, Dad, I'm hungry. Can I have something to eat? In this time we don't have any particular thing, but why you not have why why you not uh, like to have an apple? An apple. Now another concept creating in that baby's mind. So then sharing apple. Now they are uh, doing some kind of activities with apples, uh, cleaning it uh, and cutting it, uh, sharing that piece of apples with others. Uh, all these things are happening. Somehow that baby also get a bite, apple bite. Now so many informations already gathered through his ears and tasting again bites, now he, ha he has a lot of experience about apples. On the way, in that uh, trip journey, they found a beautiful apple orchard. But then they are making suggestions, why we are not to stop to do some apple pickings? No, 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 let's do on the way back. Now let's go to the place where we're going to stop. No, 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 no. Today is good day, weather is okay. And a lot of people are not coming yet. Let's go. So many informations are there through the ears about apples. Somehow they decided to go to apple picking. They are on the apple picking. So many explanation, informations are coming through ears from father, mother, brothers and sisters and any other visitors, uh, strangers, everybody were talking about apple. So many informations. Who are gathering? That baby is gathering. And they, they, they finished the apple picking, then they ready to go the journey. And there are they, have, they met a few other places, apple orchard, and they, they saw some apple stores. Looking all these things, talking about these things. Now, this baby have kind of information about apple. Who create this apple concept? Apple concept created by other human beings. All information coming through generation to generation, then label it, experience it. Now we have concept, this is apple. If I say, no, this is not apple, no one is agree with me, so we just apple. Conventionally, yes, it is apple. But this reality is not that. All these labels created by human beings. So that's why we have concepts. Things are existing. Things are not existing. Things are labeling in our mind. Because of that labels, we are holding things, oh, these things are existing. When we learn something, using that experience, we ready to keep that things as a permanent things. And another time, we, we ready to use that information, oh, this is that, I know about this. No? Oh, I have seen apple, I have tasted apple, something like that. Then. You have concept of apple is something existing. No, apple is not existing, but that, but that labels are keeping in our mind, all the labels. We program using in different resources, through parents, through medias, 
we did that programs all the programs in our mind through that programs we have thoughts oh these are existing apple existing we have but we don't know all these are creation of our wicked mind wicked mind means in here not polluted means we wicked minds means uh, with the influence of uh, ignorance desire and hatred all these things created all these concept in our mind we have all these labels with us that's why we are not able to see apple is something that belongs to conventional truth not absolute truth conventional truth yes conventionally we can accept it but reality is not there so all these things are impermanence all the things that we can see that we can hear is created in that moment it's not continuous it's not continuous only for the moment so according to our capacity if we are not develop our mind so we are staying in that conventional truth we are ready to accept all the conventional uh, conventional thing as truth that's the problem that is the problem so anyway the second one unsatisfactory when we have thoughts in our mind oh all these outside things are existing it might be sound taste feeling sensation all these things are existing when we have that concept in our mind same time we have thoughts to see things to continue it continuity is one of uh, thoughts that we have we like to see always to keep these things we like to see all alive beings we don't like any dead bodies that beings we want to see alive beings we like to see this meditation hall is existing is it is here we like to see it if some just in case this app disappear we don't like it is something happening to this building we don't like it that is our nature because it's already label in our mind it's already established with our ignorance oh this is existing this one created for few years so we are not expecting any changes there but naturally no one can stop any i mean changes changes are happening in this circle changes are happening that is the reasons to occur suffering unhappiness in our mind that's why we are unhappy we are willing we are wishing to see things as they are but unfortunately it's not happening as we wish each and every nanosecond each and everything subject to change no one can stop but we don't like to accept any of these changes then suffering arises in our mind so now you can see what is mean suffering unsatisfactory you don't like it whether you like or not it doesn't matter you have to accept it that's the problem in these situations when we are not able to accept that this nature so then we are ready to cry lament it worry stress is going up sometimes through this stress that person might depress that much uh, things would can happen in our life that's why when someone departed from you some people years and years are worried years and years worried because they are not ready to accept that they rejecting as a result of that uh, i mean they going against against the natural law no one can live going against the natural law 
They are developing their stress. They are developing their stress because they are, their wishes are against the natural law. The conflict. Where is the conflict? Conflict in your mind, not outside. Not outside. So, this is the unsatisfactory or dukkha. This is the way how we suffer. Each and every moment we are suffering. Unsatisfactoriness arises in our mind any time, no reason. Any time. It could be arising in your mind any time, no reason for that. Reason is there. Reason is our ignorance. But we are not able to recognize that ignorance that much easily. It takes time to recognize our ignorance. But anyway, all conditions is unsatisfactory. And all dhammas are without self. We have wrong views which we call me, my, myself. These are the wrong views. Regarding this body, regarding this mind, feeling, form, perceptions, all these things, taking all these things, we have concept. This is me. This is mine. This is myself, as Bhanteji mentioned in the morning. We have these wrong views with us. How long we have these wrong views, that long we are suffering. We are suffering. That long we have problem, matters. We don't have any comfortable feelings there. We don't have any supportive thoughts there because we are suffering a lot. But in this life, there are some kind of pleasures, but that pleasures remain only few seconds. Ashwada, therefore always we have to see Adi in our dangers. Through your eyes you can see pictures. If that picture have connection with your mind, oh I like it, then through that I like it. Whenever, whatever you like to see, when you, whenever you are able to see that, you are happy. Aswadi is there. You enjoy that moment. But it is only for the moment. You have to be aware. It is only for the moment. You know that things and this person subject to change. Nothing exists. If you can stay there in this way, so then no worries there, no conflict, no matters. But you have concept, I am here, I am existing here. Conceit, me, my, myself, that conceit is here with me. I like to see that. That is my favorite. So then you think, oh, that things also existing, nothing, any changes. I don't like to uh, do any, uh, happen any changes there. So. This is the way how we create each and every matters, problems, conflicts. We are thinking this is outside and in here I am also existing. So this is the way how we make troubles ourselves. But exactly even that things that you can see through your eyes is not something existing. You have concept me, my, myself, but exactly, absolutely, there is nothing to hold as me, my, myself. But there is a creation. There is a creation. Creation is who? The nature. The nature. Taking parts by parts, creating something, putting some labels, and we have concept, that is the problem. We have concepts. These things are existing. So, but anyway, in nature of Dhamma, Niyama Dhammata Sutta, the Buddha explained, my whole teachings, the discourses delivered by the Buddha, based on this, to talk about impermanence, anicca, 
suffering dukkha anatta selflessness why we want to know about these three characteristics there is a way of the realization the path of realization you can see the steps first you are developing your awareness and then mindfulness and concentration through the concentration gain in wisdom now gain in wisdom you can analyze you can investigate you can research using that wisdom so then you can see the nature of the sansara birth and death circle seeing the nature of birth and death circle nibbidaya you are disappointing nibbidaya you disappoint oh what this kind of what living in this sansara what is the benefits you see each and corner of the sansara through your wisdom now you have these experience all these experience are there you are experiencing about impermanence you are experiencing about suffering you are experiencing selflessness nibbidaya now you have concept you are developing viraga disenchant i have not supposed to keep thoughts with these conventional uh, conventional things i want to go beyond that it means uh, i want to go beyond this sansaric journey birth and death circle i want to break this circle viragaya you ready to apply the method through wisdom and applying the method you ready to you you break it break the circle and go beyond the circle nirodha nirodha you are not connecting with worldly conditions things you go beyond the worldly conditions that is enlightenment that is the way how you realize dukkha suffering cause of dukkha samudaya nirodha cessation and the applications noble eight pole path these four noble truths you realize through this way so as i mentioned last evening the discourses that we going to discuss in here based on to explain four noble truths and noble eight pole path noble eight pole path is the method four noble truth is the results realization so basically about all the discourses what would the delivered as a discourses suttas sermons this is about it is about impermanence it is about suffering it is about selflessness so this law is established law no one can change no one can change fixed law therefore this is eternal truth this is a, an eternal law this is an eternal truth and there is nothing second truth this is the one and only truth it is eternal it is eternal so the teachings of the buddha whatever the discourses that we going to discuss all these things are regarding this regarding these three characteristics because it's explained about four noble truths and noble eight pole path if there is a sutta that delivered by the buddha definitely about four noble truth or noble eight pole path that is that that's it there are some other teachings likewise depending on originations it is also another explanation about uh, for noble truths and kama it is also another explanations so all these uh, teachings should be there but mainly these two are the importance for noble truths and noble eightfold path so uh, 
we can discuss uh, few more things with uh, other times with other discourses about the Dhamma. So for now, you can keep in your mind the basically who is the Buddha, what are the teachings of the Buddha. These are very important. Who is the Buddha? What are the teachings of the Buddha? So this concept might not be able to comprehend in once. Let's take time through your experience, through your knowledge. Let us comprehend these things, this concept, basic concept. One thing I, I might uh, sure you might realize uh, the Buddha is not just a religious leader. The Buddha is not a religious leader. Buddha, the Buddha is a scientist applying that method, realizing through his experience and he just saw the path for us, for our realization. So they, then one day when we are able to realize the truth, uh, we also can experience him as the Buddha. It's completely dependent on realization. When we are able to realize the truth, uh, we also can experience him as the Buddha. This is the nature of this method. So therefore, we don't want to worry about, oh, I don't have peaceful mind yet. I have a lot of worries in my mind. I have doubt. I have anger. Yes, for now. But one day when we are able to get rid of all these unwholesome thoughts, that day we can be a peaceful person. We can be a healthy person mentally. Healthy person mentally. One day we can be a, the most peaceful person in the world like Buddha. Yes, the path is clear through the teachings of the Buddha. Let's apply the method to our day-to-day -day life. Okay, so then thank you very much for now. Uh, we are finishing this course on the nature of Dhamma or Dhamma Niyamata Sutta, uh, taking a break for a few minutes. Let us have our question and answer session. Thank you.